So uh, when I started with the challenge course, in, in, the, in the beginning, I was so thrilled. I went to a place called Project Adventure and took a, a workshop. I didn't even know where I was being sent to when I got there, and it was this thing called the challenge course. And um, I had an amazing experience. Um, I got slammed into a tree because the blade was missed. It was fun. <laughs> got hurt. It was fun. But a as a result of that, when we build our challenge course, I really wanted my participants to do in the same activities and have the experiences that, that I had had. And so my coaching tended to get them. I, I saw the element as the uh, success. Catching the trapeze bar was a success. Doing the zip line was a success. Um, so I, I kind of had that. I wanted them to have essentially my experience. And almost immediately, this was, we built our course in 1983. We built uh, four high elements and six low elements, and it cost us $6,500 for somebody else to do it. <laughs> so that's, that's about $250,000 now or something. So Yeah. Well, it was in trees and, but. Um, in my early use of the challenge course, I, I, I did have some really good results. And I saw um, with Challenge by Choice, we did see participation. Ooh, participation. Hmm. We saw it rise a little bit. Um, but I still had a few people in each program who would choose not to attempt the high elements. And usually when they did that, they would just kind of hide. They would find the way to not be seen during the program. And at the end, you'd know that certain people didn't. Now, other times, you would see other participants say, you know, you know, Sally, you haven't gone yet. Come on, let's go. Let's do it. And they start this, this encouragement and coaching other people to do stuff. Um, I'd certainly done that myself. Um, but in, in the midst of it, um, we had people. I made the assessment that people were, were actually not having the wonderful experience that I thought they should. And I couldn't figure out why. Um, when I started really seeing signs that my program wasn't working and Challenge by Choice wasn't working, um, probably the, the one that I remember most was a, a young woman, probably eighth grade, 100 kids. Um, this is 1986 or 7. We had 50 to 100 kids every day on our challenge course. By 92, I think we did eight or 9,000 participant days in 1992. We had a big course. I had five ho four low high ropes course areas of three elements each. I had five low course areas of, of each with the same five activities. So I literally could put 200 people on my course, and you couldn't see from one group to the next. It was a really neat group. I came up here in Colorado and built the same thing up in Boulder in a huge course. Um, so that was really nice. But in, on this course, um, we, with this large group, we did at the end of the day, we did one big circle and the very effective, famous one word debrief about the value of my day. Um, it's not effective. <laughs> and we're going around, and, I, and as people said their one word of their day, which is sometimes all you can do with a school group, um, I was watching this one young lady who was about uh, eighth grade and stuff. Um, it's true, she weighed more than almost all the other participants, I think is the, the way I would like to s express that. It's just true. It's objective that she weighed more than others. It's true that she never climbed a single high element in a day. It's true that at some point she took her harness off and left it back in the pile and just kind of wandered around. So at the end of the program, I said, without pointing anybody out, I said, let's all celebrate the, 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 some of the people in the program made the right choice, made the perfect choice, made a challenge by choice, and didn't climb anything today. And I thought that I was validating. And I just kind of looked out of my corner of my eye, and her face turned bright red. She looked down, and the net effect of what I had just done was I called her out, and I humiliated her. And whether anybody else in the circle knew it, she knew it. I destroyed the experience that she had that day with really good intentions, but I still wrecked it big time. Um, a corporate program, uh, the CEO, uh, eight or 10, a CEO male, eight or 10 male workers, and one strong, well-spoken woman in this management team were at the leap of faith. 
up there, she steps up. We're starting to, you know, check. Can we check the harness? Can you check that? Can you move your jacket a little bit? Good. We, that looks good. Never touch a participant unless you need to. Ask permission. Let them do as much as you can. You don't have any permission to touch a person unless you absolutely need to, and you're better off if you don't. So you want to see what's under the jacket? So could you move that for me? I'd like to see your harness. Could you shift your jacket? Could you tuck your shirt in for me, please? Um, all the ways that you can do to let them be in control of their body, and there's no reason for you to ever touch a participant except in an emergency or when they really need help. Um, little aside there. So she steps up. We're starting to get ready. I said, may, I, may I clip this to your harness? <coughs> Just kind of. And I, you know, I check the carabiner and stuff, and we're ready. And I say, are you ready? She just, said, you ready to do this? She says, you really want to know? I said, yeah. She says, no, I don't want to do this. Kind of a muted voice. And I'm like, wait, what? She says, I, I don't, no, I don't want to do this. I said, well, why are, why are you doing it? And she heard challenge by choice. She says, you're, you're a little naive, and you really don't understand. She was nice, but direct. That's my boss. He told us coming out here that he was expecting all of us to show how we would perform and how much this team meant and the extent we were willing to go to show that we were part of this team. Check my system. Stay on belay. I'd like to get this over with. And I stood there and I just said, you don't have to do this. She says, I hear you. Let's go. Third, I worked with a, uh, uh, one of these personal growth companies uh, for a very short period of time. I worked in their other segment, which taught uh, accounting and an experiential process. And their whole company came out, including the, the CEO lady, and at some point, she came up to me and she says, you know, Tom, your people all talk a good story about this challenge by choice thing. She said, but uh, what I notice is that when people are in elements, they said challenge by choice, but every time somebody hesitates or says they want to come down, your key people keep trying to talk them into doing it. She said, so I'm not sure your people really get what this concept means. Do you? And I mean, it was a gift. She was insane in general, but um, it, it was a gift. So, so my sense was, as I started getting this feedback, that my intention of choice in this wonderful program, there was just really something rotten and something that was really off and a whole lot of stuff that I truly was completely out of touch, naive, uninformed, and unlightened on the whole thing. So I really had to step back and really take a look at this. And this is the, by this point, this, this last story was uh, 1991. Um, when I got this piece. So it's taken a long time to figure out this challenge by choice thing. So it essentially was a really big reality check for me. 